I was originally planning on just moving on to the Mario 2 review since I dropped the Mario 1 video, but given that these videos take around 3 or 4 days to edit, I thought it would be appropriate to make a shorter video before doing that. So no, this isn't a new entry in the Mario retrospective, but given that it is a Mario platformer, I guess this could be considered a sort of episode 1.5 of it. But yeah, Mario Bros is a weird game. Both its predecessor and its pseudo sequel got a lot of love, but Mario Bros is just kind of the less memorable one. And that's weird to me. It introduced Luigi, the fact that they're plumbers, the Koopas, a bunch of shit. And yet no one really seems to talk about it, so I guess I gotta do it. Mario Bros is just an okay game, which I can only assume is the reason behind its forgettable nature. First off, the controls are complete dog shit. Ground controls are whatever, it takes only slightly longer to accelerate and slow down than it really should, but it's fine. But there is absolutely no air control. It's not like there is, but only a little. You just can't control yourself in the slightest when midair, and it feels so bad. This has improved in the Game Boy Advance version, but here it's probably my biggest issue with it. Before some levels, you have a little cutscene explaining the new enemy that the level adds. It's a great way to add a little extra conveyance to the player, but they don't last that long, meaning people who don't already know how they work won't be sitting and waiting there. As Mario, you gotta hit the platforms where the enemies are standing from below to knock them over, and after that you can kick them. I like this approach. While stomping enemies is fine, it wouldn't really fit nearly as well in this arcade setting where high scores take priority. It also ends up making the game a lot more memorable, as it's way more different. Some enemies can be killed in different ways too. Koopas are the first enemy, and in terms of a tutorial, they do their job quite well in introducing the method of killing enemies. You simply gotta flip them over and then walk into them to kill them. The sidesteppers are where the real challenge is. After hitting the platform once, they go into an angry state where they move way faster. If you hit the platform they're standing on while they're in the angry state, they're finally flipped over and you can kick them. The flies are purposely annoying. They work similar to the Koopas, but they bounce while moving and can only be flipped over while on the ground, meaning you gotta time your jumps. These guys can be a pain in the dick, but they aren't unmanageable. The freezies are introduced later, and they freeze the ground, making it slippery. Unlike every other enemy, you simply gotta hit the ground underneath them to kill them, you don't even have to kick them afterward. But there is one more thing that can kill you that actually kinda pisses me off. The fireballs are so fucking annoying. They spawn in at completely random times, and they move around the stage. First off, they're giant. How am I meant to dodge these things, bruh? But for the red one, it's fine enough, considering it bounces around the stage, meaning you can go under it. But the green one is my worst fucking enemy. It says too low for you to go under and too high for you to go above. This fucking thing makes the game like twice as hard as I hate it. If it was just the red one, it would be fine, but the green one sucks my cock. I do hate it, but thankfully you can kill it using the power block, which is a cool addition. You can use it at any time when you're at the bottom of the screen, and it's sort of like a screen wipe, only it just flips over enemies rather than killing them. It can only be used three times, making it cool to strategize when you want to use it and when you want to save it for later. It also replenishes every time you get to a bonus stage, which is a good addition. You don't really want one of your main mechanics to be gone for half the game, so it's good how the game makes use of it as much as it can. Another good addition is the coins, further adding to the focus of getting a high score. They add a cool risk or reward factor I kinda like. They spawn every enemy defeated, and when you collect them, you get an extra 800 points. I really like the risk or reward dynamic. Do you go for them risking dying, or stay put where you are? The bonus stages are a great expansion on the concept. The stages have no enemies, just a bunch of coins. You're rewarded a normal amount of points for each individual coin, but for collecting all of them you get a bonus. They do have a time limit though, but I wish it was in the normal game. The game has no time limit or whatever, so you can effectively just take all the time you need to do stuff, which sucks. I wish every second you lost 100 points or something, that would add a lot of franticness to the gameplay that would be greatly appreciated. It's fine without it, but I wish it was there. But my biggest issue with the gameplay is that it really just too hard. Yeah, that's it. The shitty controls on the green fireballs make the game way harder than it needs to be. But as we'll see with the ports, they make the game way easier to the point where it's unengaging, so there really isn't a definitive version which sucks. They could've just removed the green fireballs and the game would've been way better, but having them there makes the difficulty feel really arbitrary at times. But overall, the arcade version is still something I call a good game. It has a lot of good ideas and aspects, and with a few minor tweaks it could be great. And that's exactly what I think of the ports too. Much like with the Bonanza Bros video, I'm gonna be covering a few ports of the game, specifically the NES and the Game Boy Advance versions. Despite being effectively the same game, they offer quite unique experiences. Starting off with the NES version, I don't think I can call this one good. While it's still Mario Bros at heart and doesn't make any game-changing additions, a lot of little things contribute to this version being pretty boring. First off, it is just way too easy, and it's no doubt due to the limitations of the NES. There's never more than like two enemies on screen, three at the very most. 
and it makes the game almost mind-numbingly easy, which has got to be my biggest issue. One thing this game added is game B, which is also pretty bad. It's essentially a harder version of the game, making fireballs more common and enemies faster. But even still, I don't think it does enough to make it an adequate difficulty. I quit at around stage 12, but I assume it takes way too long to get hard given I didn't even notice a difficulty increase at all. And overall, this version of the game is pretty damn boring, whether playing on game A or game B. The GBA version fares way better, but overall I think the original is superior. First off, it looks great. This is visually my favourite looking version, I really like it. There's also different locations for each bundle of stages. They also fix the controls completely. It was really jarring for me to go from this game which controls like complete dog shit, to this one where it controls really well. But onto everything else, nah. It's definitely better than the NES version, but it gets old pretty quickly. It has the same issue as the NES game, where enemies just aren't common enough. Oddly enough, I think the shit way the arcade game controlled actually made it more difficult, so having this where I can actually control myself mid-air makes the game way easier. It allows me to do the strategy I don't have a name for, and it made the game an absolute cakewalk for me. And it sucks too, because if this game was just a bit harder, it'd probably be the best version. But as of now, I think the arcade one is still on top. While that one was infuriatingly hard, I'd much rather have that than it be straight up boring because it's like a challenge. But still though, after playing this, I now realise why this game isn't talked about that much. Mario Bros didn't really do much in the grand scheme of things, and while I definitely want to like it, it's probably my least favourite of the first three games. I like Donkey Kong quite a bit, I like Mario 1, but Mario Bros is just pretty forgettable and whatever, you know? But yeah, it's I. I have a question for you guys, do you want to see more of this? Like, mini reviews for side games after every main video. Because I genuinely want to make more of these, but I guess leave your feedback in the comments. Alright, video's over, go home.